G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and welcome to an online version of Equine Affair. You know, one of the things that I see people struggle with a lot is getting them, asking their horse to, to respond to an ask. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, especially on the ground, a lot of times it has to do with being incongruent to where you're your body's asking one thing and your mind's thinking something else and horses are really good at reading all that sort of stuff. And a lot of times people are not really aware what's going on within themselves and that's what causes the problem. And we have a friend that lives uh, not far from here and she is an equine assisted therapist. And she talks about the four, the four important points when you are communicating with someone or having a relationship with someone. But she says that or a connection with somebody, but there's four things. Number one is what's going on with me. Number two, what's going on with you? In this case, it would be what's going on with the horse. Number three is what's going on between me and you, or in this case, you and the horse. And number four, what's going on in the surround, what's going on in the, in the surroundings, in the environment. And most people I see with their horses are very aware of number two and number four what my horse is doing wrong and what's over there that's causing my horse to do the thing wrong. But we don't really check in with ourselves. So for the last few years, I've really been working on incorporating some techniques into teaching people to ask their horse to move on the ground that first has you check in with yourself, be aware of your own internal energy. And there's been times in the past where I've been trying to help people with their horses and I can get them to do the physical things right, the physical asks right, but it doesn't come out the same way for them as it does for me. And what I've realized is it's all that internal stuff that's going on that makes the huge difference. So this video here is of a little short stout gypsy cob at a clinic in England and he starts out you know, if, if the lady asks him to move, he just kind of pushes into her. And so the whole thing start goes, shows what he's like at the start like that. And then it shows the process and it gets to the end where I can ask him to yield off around me and he will actually go off around my energy bubble and not push into it. And, and I think, you know, horses like this one, like, like the gypsy cobs and anything that's cute and fluffy tends to be a bit pushy and that has to do with some of our interpretations. But um, yeah, it's, it's a common problem I see and I, th I think this video here will really help you if you're struggling in that department. One of the things that keeps our horses feeling safe and gives them a feeling of well-being is being surrounded by others who are present and aware. And that's where their herd comes in. So when we're around them, the thing we want to do, we want to be present and aware. And when we come to asking horses to do things is where a lot of times we get into trouble because a lot of times our bodies do things we're not aware that they're doing. And so, the big thing, if you're going to ask a horse to move, there's a certain way I'd probably uh, ask you to do it. So this is if you're, if you're asking your horse to move off around you. What I'd like you to do is try to have a mental picture first of what you want your horse to do. You know, I, I, I really believe that's going to be a big part of this stuff in the future. I haven't actually got it to happen yet, but I keep putting that mental picture in there. So it'd be, if you're going to ask your horse to go off around you, you'd want to use uh, a mental picture and I would probably try to do it for about three seconds try to do everything for about three seconds so there'd be a mental picture the next thing I want you to do is is use you know point with your hand and you want to have your rope short enough so that when you point it puts a little bit of a feel on that halter so you're teaching your horse how to lead you teach them how to tie up you teach them how to steer you teach them how to respond to that when you do that and you can probably take three seconds to have it lift up to here. You know, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. When you get there and there's no response, then what I want you to do is, is look at that outside shoulder. So if I was trying to get the horse to go that way, I'd look at the shoulder on that side and bring my energy and intention up. Kind of like what I call a mum look. If you remember when you were a kid and you were doing something wrong and your mum, you could feel mum's eyes staring at the back of your neck. Um, 
kind of like a mum look. Do that for about three seconds. If your horse hasn't responded, then what I want you to do is take half a step forward, which means leave one foot where it is, step your other foot to them, which means if you've got this energy bubble around you, you've just stepped forward and you've pressed that energy bubble up against that shoulder. If they don't go then, then start with your flag out here and slowly, slowly come in until they go. You're really trying to get that shoulder to yield over. It should go around you, not forward into you. And then as soon as they go, you're just going to turn all the energy off, step back, draw them back into you and start all over again. And you're really trying to teach a horse how to read your energy. And you're also trying to make sure, you're also telling the horse how much you've been how much in control of your own energy you are, how control of your thoughts you are, and how in control of your energy you are, how in control of your actions you are. And that's probably one of the biggest things to having a horse feel peaceful inside is the fact that you can do all that stuff. And so this little exercise here, which is about getting a horse to move, is so much more than about getting a horse to move. Like I said, it's, it's, it's asking them to move, but you're asking them to move in a certain way. It's a yield, it's not a go, so you're not asking them to just go, you're asking them to yield. It's like you're dancing and it's the first step of the dance. Uh, it's that, like I said, it's, it's showing that horse how much in control of your thoughts you are, how much control of your energy you are, and how much in control of your physical movements you are, and that you know what you're doing with that. Your body's not doing things without you knowing what it's doing. And so in this clip, it was filmed at a clinic in the, in the UK recently. There's a lady in her, uh, she's got a, a gypsy cob. And before this, before this clip, I asked everybody, so what, what are gypsy cobs normally like? Are they normally really flighty animals? Or are they kind of dull? And everybody kind of agreed that they're, they're uh, kind of dull, but then I don't think they're, they're dull at all. I think they're actually quite sensitive. And I think we just don't use that energy and intention as part of our asks enough. And I really think that using that energy and intention as part of your ask is a big part to them feeling safe. And probably the, the biggest mistake I see people still to this very day making, and the lady in this, this clip makes the same mistake too, is asking the horse to go and stepping backwards at the same time, which is, which is an incongruent behavior. And horses are very good at detecting incongruency. And incongruency is when you're, you're in a landscape and you're out of landscape, don't line up. And in this case, she was wanting the horse to go away from her, but stepping backwards without even knowing she was stepping backwards. And that sort of incongruency with horses, I think tends to make them nervous. And the way I look at it is, you know, if you've ever watched um, like a National Geographic thing, you know, there's zebras out there grazing. You can see a lion walk by in the background. As long as that lion's walking by and he's thinking I'm heading to the watering hole, they're not bothered by it. But if that horse tried to sneak by and go and pretend I'm going to the watering hole, but I'm really going to try to get one of these zebras here, the, the intention and energy in the air would probably change. And I think that incongruency, I'm pretending I'm doing one thing, but I'm thinking another thing, I think that really, really bothers horses. So... You know, if, just watch this clip and if you are asking your horse to do something, I would like you to ask this way. And in this clip, and initially it's about moving his shoulder over. So I want that shoulder, I want to be able to look at it and put some energy and intention to it. And they should almost bend around it. If you watch this horse in the start of this clip, when I get him to go, he kind of turns his head and he's leaving. But after a while, when I get him to go, I can look at that shoulder and he kind of bends around this way and stays mentally over here. And he actually gets to the point where I can have him go around and I could look at his loin and as I look at his loin he mentally comes in here and that's what we're really really trying to get so if you haven't worked on this stuff yet watch this video and practice it because I think it's a very very important part of our whole interaction with our horses. I know you, I met you last night but Sarah. Sarah. Hello Sarah. Hello sweetness. You are very cute. So where are you up to with this beautiful one? Um. Sort of the, the focusing and just kind of what we've been doing. We haven't really gone much further than that. Okay, well that's really so, everything. If you can okay. get that working, everything okay. else works. Big thing I would like to be able to get is ask the horse to go without the horse mentally leaving. That's the holy grail. Once we get that and we can keep that, everything goes from there. But if they mentally leave when you ask them to go, if you leave that there and then say, now I want more go, we tend to get all male mental disconnection and then we get more brace, more resistance and then the, the more go we get, the more resistance we get. 
That's, he that's, has no go on the saddle at all. He's never go on the saddle at all? Okay. But he's got to go on the ground? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so everything's a pro. Oh my God, he's huge, isn't he? Hello. Yeah, and he's lost a lot of weight. He's lost a lot of weight. Where did he lose it from? His nose? <laughs> We've, we, we have shoulder blades. We've not had those before. You've not had shoulder blades? <laughs> in there somewhere. Oh, look, we can actually get in underneath them too. Hello. Um, things are a matter of elimination. Okay? He can go on the ground but can't go on the saddle. Okay, so it's not that he can't go. Then you go, is it saddle fit? Is it my communication with him? Does he not know what I'm... You know, a lot, I had someone on my Facebook group yesterday ask a question that I get a lot. My horse will lock up and won't move. Okay. And I go, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, I think I saw it. That was yesterday. My horse will lock up and won't move. And I said, when does it happen? She said, well, it, hacking out, and this is the backwards from what it normally happens, is she said, hacking out, he'll go out, but when I turn to come home, he'll lock up and won't move. And I said, there is only occur then? And she said, yes. And I said, what if you turn around and go the other way? And she goes, oh, he moves then. And I said, well, hang on. You just said you were painting the picture of a horse that locks up and won't move. That's like, I'm refusing to move. Now you tell me he will move, but he will only move in one direction. So that tells me it's not that he doesn't want to move. There's a reason for him not wanting to move in that direction. There's something causing concern from that direction. So it's not a one, you wouldn't approach it with a, my horse won't move thing. You would be approach it with something there is repelling my horse or something here is attracting my horse or both. But it's not a, I won't move. Does that make sense there? Um, and then sometimes people will say, well, yeah, my horse will lock up and won't move and won't move anywhere, won't move a single foot anywhere. And I said, well, then you go back to the first ride where you bend your head and you ask him to disengage behind. Will your horse do that? She goes, he'll probably do that. Okay, well, now it's not he won't move because now you can get him moving. He won't move from this spot. And so the best way to get a horse who won't move from this spot to move from this spot is tell him, you don't have to move from this spot, you just have to move. And you just disengage him. And after a while, they're like, well, this is no fun. Can I at least... Yeah. You are a funny man, aren't you? So let's have a look at this. This um, What is like when you send him off around you? Okay. Stop for a second. So cobs tend to be dull, don't they? Someone says no. Hello. Do cobs tend to be dull? Uh, no. Oh, come on. Every other human on the face of the planet says cobs tend to be dull. It, that's like saying all red mares. Or... I know. <laughs> In most people's experiences, cobs tend to be dull. Now, is yours a little bit dull? Appeared to be right then. Yeah, we had, yeah. We had a period when he was taking off, but that was a wolf too. That was, uh, had a period when he was taking off, that was a wolf tooth. So he can run if he wants to. Okay. So right then, you said, what were you asking him to do? Move away from, no, don't do it. Just tell me what you were trying to achieve. Trying to get him to move away from what? The camera, the FEI sign, you. And when you asked him to move away from you, you step backwards as you asked him to move away from you. So basically you're teaching him, if I present this energy, what it means is, don't move away from me, I'll move away from you. And then we go, now I want to go faster. And when I do this more, nothing happens. So this is where it comes down to, we've really got to, we've got to um, really be aware of what we're doing. Now, cobs tend to be on the quieter side. Okay, so if you, remember I was talking this morning about, um, incongruency. If you're incongruent with a quiet type, it tends to make them more quiet because they're not paying attention to what you do. If you're incongruent with an anxious type, it tends to make them more anxious because they, you worry the hell out of them. So that little stepping backwards way out of the go could make some horses really worried. Not him so much, but you also don't have any 
responsiveness. Does that make sense there? So just go ahead and try it again and try to be aware of the fact. Just do it to me, actually. I'm your horse. Good. So what's the first thing you're going to do when you ask me to go? I'm going to think about Okay, perfect. Now, right now, where's all your energy going? You just, so you're just, so you're kind of blocking me from going that way, okay? Point that way, go ahead and point that way, that way. Good, but keep everything there. Now I want you to look right here, and I want you to think, I'm gonna to go to that spot. Just walk straight to this spot. Good, now you're pushing me over here, aren't you? So does it, if that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so let's do the, what you just did. Face me, point that way, and lean into that spot. Into that spot, right there. So yeah. where are you pushing me now? You're pushing me this way. Yeah. Does that make sense? You're squeezing me the wrong way. Does that make sense? So now if you, let's say you wanted your horse to go this way and you turn and you take your energy parallel to them, that's not blocking them, but you kind of had an, an angle that way. So all these kids, that were, did anybody go over and get some food this morning and find there's a lot of kids over there? They're all here for a rugby thing, aren't they? Okay. I used to play on the wing in the rugby. And if I've got the ball and I'm running down the wing here and my opposite winger goes that way, it's going to cause me to sidestep to the inside. He's blocking me over there. Does that make sense there? So this is all about energy angles, intention, where you're going, what you want to do, all that sort of stuff. So let's try it with me again. Just loosen your rope so you don't pull on him as you think. Because I'm pretty sure he's not going to run away. Okay, so let's go ahead and send me off this way again. So you've got your mental picture. you got that. That was all very fast, wasn't it? Yeah, good. So let's just slow it down. We'll try it again. The reason I'm having you do it with me is so you can slow things down. So we're going to have a mental picture. Now go ahead and point this way for about three seconds. Notice you leant forward as you did it. Let's back up again. So you, where's my dress arch lady? You're doing your seat aid, your leg aid, and your whip aid all at the same time. It doesn't matter, especially with this horse, it's not gonna run over. It doesn't matter if the horse doesn't go. So go ahead and let's point this way. Very good. Nothing's happened. So now I want you to almost get up on the balls of your feet. Not necessarily on the board, yeah. but just get some energy. Right now, I feel some energy and intention off you. So look at this shoulder here. Now, I'm going to come closer because this is about where your horse is. Good. Now, go ahead and step towards. Good. Very good. Now, I just ran over you. See how close I am now? Because I didn't go. I wasn't your dance partner. I didn't go this way. I went, I'm going to go for a walk. And if you're thinking, what I want my horse to do is move, and he does that, and you take your energy away. You've taught him that if I do this, you should come this way. And then what you find is, when I do more of this, my horse won't trot. Because I've got a cob and they're lazy. You know what I mean? So it's really, really about being aware of what you're doing with that body language, your body language, and then what you're expecting him to do. Does that make sense? Yep. Let me borrow him for a second. What I might do is see if I can get him operating off my body language a little. Um, Hey, you were so cute. Getting operating of my body language just a little bit. I was going to say a little bit better, but I'm just thinking a little bit. Yeah, no, I know, you're so good. So I'm going to start here. Mental picture. I'm going to do that. He hasn't gone anywhere, no big deal. I'm trying to look at his right shoulder. Hello, it's hard to see with your head in the face. I'm looking at your right shoulder. I'm going to step towards it. Energy, intention. There's nothing happening. I'm going to start here, 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 here. Right about there. He finally moved away from it. Now I'm going to drop everything and bring him back over here. So I got him to move away from that. He completely disconnected from me too, and he did. But unless, I, you might have seen with Sharon's horse over here before, I worked on getting that shoulder to respond to my energy and intention and flag. And after a while, I could look at that shoulder and the shoulder would move right away and the, the, the mind would come in. So I don't really mind the fact that he disconnected right then. I'm just not going to finish the whole interaction with the disconnection. You might notice I stepped backwards and when he wasn't coming, I let this rope slide. I ended up on your knot on the end here 
and then finally again we come back in here and where was his attention when we finished right there hello mister so we're going to try this again can you stay right there and i'm going to go over here thank you so mental picture i'm going to pick up here i'm going to look at his shoulder now i'm going to have some energy some intention a mum look are you a mum are you a mum no the mum look then I'm going to step towards that shoulder. Nothing's happened, so I'm going to start here, go here. I'm getting slowly, bigger, bigger. And he's telling me nothing's working, so I'm going to get quite a bit bigger. Let him go. Now I'm going to try to step over here and bring him back. And see his ears came towards me? So he came back in, not because I pulled on the rope, because I got in front of him and I was moving away from him while in front of him and he's like, oh, that's interesting. Does that make sense to you guys? If you, I could probably pull him in, but some horses you pull them in, as soon as you start to pull, they're like, ooh. So what's different already? What's he not doing right now? He's not chewing my microphone. He's over there. I just got a little bit of drive, a little bit more, a little bit of push, and now I don't have to worry about this thing. So that's why I wasn't worried about him being up here, because I knew if I tried to just subtly get him off me, it wasn't going to work anyway. So I'll just start there. Does that make sense to you guys? I don't want to be ineffective. So if he comes on top of me and I'm like, get off, get off, get off. If I know I can't get him to yield, I can't get him to yield subtly up there. I'll just start my ask there. But I've got a lot less of this, don't I? So now I'm going to mentally picture, pick up here. Notice my, I haven't leant forward. Nothing's changed yet. Now I'm going to look at that shoulder. Now I've got some energy and intention. Nothing's changed. So now I'm going to go, I'm going to step over here into your space here, sunshine. Nothing's happening. So I'm going to start here, 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 and right there. I got him to move over slightly without having to wave the flag a million miles an hour. So I'm just trying to establish, hey mister, I'm trying to establish a pattern here. You know, one of the principles of training on your piece of paper is anticipation is your best friend or your worst enemy. How you establish anticipation is creating a pattern, doing things over and over and over the same way. If you want to not create anticipation, you do things differently every time, which means if your application of your aids is different every time, you're not teaching them to anticipate the answer. If your application of the aids is the same every time you are. Okay, mental picture. Pick up here. Now right here, he's, right then he crossed the line. So he moved rather easily, but he didn't move towards me. He moved, I mean, sorry, he didn't move away from me. He moved towards me. So then the three second rule goes away. As long as he's on the outside of that line, not running over me. But if I have any intention about him not coming in here, he should be able to feel that intention. I'm just going to step back over here. Now, so now I'm doing what Kristen's doing. He hits the end of the lead rope. I redirect his attention back over here. So we went from not being able to move. Now when I try to attract his attention, ah, he's running away. Now I'm going to be glick and chew. So the, the, the secret to the whole thing is, can you... Can you get your point across? Can you be clear? Can you be consistent? Can you be logical? Um, and you see what happened then? I'm approaching him and he just thought, should I leave? Like, I'm just gonna walk up here to him. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, so I'm gonna ask him to go again. But see, I've got a lot more attention here. So, mental picture. Ask him to go. No, he hasn't gone. Energy, intention, I'm looking at that shoulder. I'm going to step towards that shoulder with some authority and say, I want you to move that thing over. Hmm. You haven't noticed that? Okay, I'm going to start over here, go a little bit closer, a little bit closer. You've got to move that rib cage over there. And now he's running away. So right then his shoulder moved over a bit, but he had a big old bow with his rib cage. And now he's back here. And he licks and chews. So how do we end up every time? We end up with connection. I don't want to end up with disconnection. So if right then I was like, hey, I've got him to go. That's great. He's going around me. And I stop asking. 
I'm rewarding him thinking out there. Does that make sense? Because that was almost one ask. Go, 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 come in here. The last thing he did was... That was interesting. The last thing here is, is he's back with me. Mental picture. Pick up here very softly. Energy. Intention. I'm going to step towards his shoulder and say, can you move that thing over? And that's a start, isn't it, right there? At least he knew I did that. He saw the change in my body. I'm going to start here and say, can you get that over there? Very good. So you can see how much more, if you can go about this a certain way, he's starting to respond to subtlety. And responding to that subtlety, he has to pay attention. Okay, so I'm not demanding his attention. It's I'm getting his attention through how I ask him to do things. Okay, mental picture. Look up here. I'm going to look at his shoulder. I've got some energy, some intention. I'm not going to panic. He's coming closer. No big deal. Now I'm going to step towards him right here and go, can you move that? And see there was a bit of movement right there, not much. I'm going to start here. Can you move this over away from me? Now can you move your loin over and away from me? Very good. So right then, when I asked that shoulder to move, it kind of went. By the time I got to the shoulder, it went easily. So I just shifted my gaze back down. My intention was there. You didn't notice it. And so, mental picture. Pick out here. No response, no big deal. Energy. Intention. I'm going to step towards his shoulder and say, I want that to move away from me. He can feel that, he's just not responding to it. Like right then he felt it, he was aware of it. Now I'm going to go, this goes on the end of it. Now I'm looking at your loin. Very good. Excellent. So it's just that. That's really all we're trying to do. So the reason I went to his loin right then because he moved away from the, the first bit. So I'm teaching him, think about this, I'm teaching him to go away from me when I do this type of energy. Move that thing over. Now, he's going away from me. Now I'm gonna change my energy completely. I've got like a sucking energy. And I'm stepping backwards and I'm almost pulling him on my belly button. I'm bringing him in and now I have no energy. Okay, so I'm almost getting him to where I'm doing this, he's going that way. I'm doing this, he's coming this way. And there's a difference between the two. But I don't wanna finish up on that. I wanna finish up on this. Unless, of course, I've got too much this and not enough that. It's just a balance thing. Does that make sense? You're a sweetheart, aren't you? Okay, so mental picture. Pick up here. He didn't do anything, no big deal. Energy, intention, I'm gonna to step towards him. Nothing's happened yet. He's coming closer. I'm gonna start here. That moves over, I'm gonna look at his loin. It hasn't moved. And there it moves over. Now I've got a sucking energy and I'm bringing him back towards me. And it's just a matter of repeating this to where he can read that, he can read that. And what do we have to do to be able to remember to have our sucking energy and our pushing energy and our no energy? Be present. And Last year when I was doing the therapy stuff, one of the things they said for when people have an emotional crisis, like you're getting a bit emotional about something, one thing they can do that can help is they do a thing called a half smile. So everybody try this half smile right now. So have no expression on your face. And what I want you to do is I want you to curl the corners of your lip up into the start, not too big, into the start of a smile that is so small, I, no one, the person sitting next to you couldn't see it, but you can feel the tension pick up there. Okay, so just think about having no, no expression and then, okay, I just did it. That's supposed to help you when you have an emotional crisis. So I said to the therapist, what is it about that thing physiologically? What does that do for you? What is it about a smile that will bring you emotionally back down rather than something else? 
Is there actually a physiological reaction? Or is this thing so subtle and so minute that you have to be fully present to do it? You can be thinking about all the things that are going wrong in your life and smack on a big old fake smile. And you can still be thinking about all the things that are going wrong. But in order to do this one, so, so subtle, you have to be really present. And I think it's some of these things, it might be more about less than what we're doing, but the fact that in order to do them that way, we have to be really present. You know, I, I don't know if it's, you know, if it's one or the other. I'm, I'm starting to think, same with matching steps. Is it important that your steps are exactly in time with theirs? Or is it important the fact that in order to get your steps totally in time with theirs, you have to be very present. You can't be thinking about making dinner while you're doing it. I've been wanting to do an experiment where you do it like on a half beat, like their left front foot hits the ground and my right foot is in the air. But that actually takes more present than to do just matching steps. But I'm wondering if you, if you could do that if you could actually, if it would get the same result or it's important you match steps. Does that make sense? I, I'm not sure if it's important the thing you do or the task you're given. It's important that you are present in order to do that task. The task itself is not that important. Over you go. Now I'm looking at your loin. Gotta get that thing over there. Now that time, what was different about that time when I looked at his loin and waved the flag? Where did his attention go? It came in. Every other time I've waved the flag at his hind end, whoa, he's run away and I had to kind of drag him back in from the end of the lead rope. So that was more connection right there too, wasn't it? You are a sweetness. But he's got plenty of energy. So, back up here. Look at his shoulder, then bring up some intention. I'm gonna to step towards that shoulder. The rope's around my feet. I'm aware of that. I can feel it on my foot. Flag from here to here, he starts to move over. I look at his loin, you gotta move that thing over there, and I step backwards. I do, so when he's heading out that way and I step backwards, the last thing I wanna do is grab a hold, lock down that lead rope and go, come over here. You know, it's like if you're running away from someone and they grab a hold of you. So I wanna encourage him to come back here without grabbing a hold of him. You are little cute, aren't you? Okay, so mental picture, pick up here. And that's an important part of the whole thing because I really would like you to learn to respond to that while you learn to respond to this other stuff. So look, energy, intention, step towards him. I'm pushing on you. Do you not feel me pushing on him? No, okay, so I'm gonna start here. So now he's responding to the flag and look at that line. I'm projecting energy towards that line, it rolls around. So I just pushed him to me. I just put pressure on him and it brought his mind back to me, which is, I talked about that foal I've been working with this morning. First time working her loose, I said, can you go? And she went off around me, her eyes were on me, and any pressure I put on, I made a go, but made her think more towards me. In the past, when I put pressure on horses, they would go, but they'd think out because any driving pressure I've done in the past was to get them to go. And you have a bit of mental disassociation with it at the time, so you stop asking, and I'm rewarding the go, but you're also rewarding the mental disassociation. Nowadays, if I'm putting pressure back there, it's not to get them to go, it's to get them to think in here. Then when they get thinking in here and you put more pressure to get them to go, you get more thinking, plus you got the going. Hey, sweetie, so mental picture. Pick up here. So the head moved that time. That's the first time the head's responded to that halter. Look at that shoulder. Get some energy. I'm going to step in here and go, I want you to move that over there for me, sunshine. And you haven't. So notice this foot hasn't come forward. I'm not going any closer. I've taken my energy and pressed it up against her and she doesn't feel it. So I'm going to start here. There, now I'm looking at her loin. That loin moves over comes back in here. You're yeah, awesome, sweetness. I'm gonna let you take over here. That's basically all I want you to practice, okay? Before you do it, I'm not gonna come over here and watch you because I think that makes people worse for a lot of the time. Before you do it, I want you to go over there and think, okay, I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this, then I'm gonna do this. 
Picture it in your head. Do that a few times. Then go ahead and do it once. And if you recognize what you, if you made a mistake, go back and go, okay, before I do that again, I'm going to do this, 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 and this. No one's going to watch you because we're all going to look over here right now.